All right, welcome to derivatives of trigonomic functions. And uh, before we begin, we have six trig functions that we're going to look at. And if you think back to algebra two and precalculus, we have sine, cosine, and tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. And so we're going to have derivatives for each of these. So on this first slide here, I've given you all six rules that we're going to learn and we're going to apply. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. The derivative of cosine, and you have to be careful here, the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x, the opposite of sine x. So I put that in red to be careful. The derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. Okay, we have the derivative of secant x is secant x times tangent of x. The derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x, cotangent x, and finally, the derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. So these are the six uh, derivatives that we're going to use throughout this, um, this concept, and we're going to apply all these and just really just take derivatives of trig functions. We may use product rule, quotient rule. Um, most of the time we, when we introduce trig functions, then we get into start talking about the chain rule. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So on this first one, we're going to differentiate uh, x squared times sine of x, and right away this is going to be product rule. So uh, x squared times sine of x, here's f, here's g. I rewrote my rule, so the derivative of my function is equal to f times g prime plus uh, f prime g. Um, so we have to find f, we have to find g, and we have to differentiate. I'm going to let f be x squared, so f prime is 2x. If g equals sine of x, remember that g prime is cosine of x. So I've got all the pieces now, f, f prime, g, g prime. Now it's substitution. So I substitute each of my values into my product rule. So I have x squared times cosine of x. There's f, g prime plus f prime, g. Okay, and I just leave it. So my derivative is boxed here. I didn't simplify it. I, I could have factored out an x, but this is good enough. We're fine with this. Uh, in the second example here, in part b, we're going to differentiate sine squared of x. Uh, and this is an important rule because we can, re we can actually rewrite this uh, function, f of x equals sine of x squared. So this property allows us, when we're taking sine squared x, you can just move that power to the outside. And so we're going to apply the chain rule. We're going to bring, the, so the derivative is equal to 2 gets brought out to the front times the inside, sine of x, times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine x. So our answer is 2 times sine x times cosine of x, and that's our answer. So we apply the chain rule here. Multiply the number out front times this number, sine of x, and times the derivative of the inside. So a lot of times when we look at... Um, trig functions we use a lot of chain rule, okay, because these are trig functions and we change this value x to something else and so we definitely need to be aware of the chain rule here. So if you need to review, you can, you can go back and watch that video. Alright, so those are two examples. Let's look at a few more. Now, uh, this example, differentiate g of x equals 4 times the tangent of x minus 5 times the cosecant of x. So what we're going to do here is we're going to really just separate this function out because there's a lot going on here. You might think, oh, four times this, there's uh, product rule, product rule. But let's be careful. Let's use some of our basic differentiation rules and rewrite this. So we're going to take four times the derivative of tangent of x minus five times the derivative of cosecant x. And those are our basic sum and difference and, and, and product um, formulas for differentiation. So I can, I can actually just kind of bring the 4 and the 5 out and ignore them and just differentiate this function. And that's what we did here. We just rewrote it. So I'm going to come down here and leave 4. And so I know the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x minus 5 times the derivative of cosecant x, which is negative cosecant x cotangent. We have a little bit of simplification left. The negatives, the subtraction, the negative here makes that positive. So we get 4 secant squared x plus 5 cosecant of, x, cosecant of x cotangent of x. And that's our derivative. So if you would have done the product rule here and here, you would have gotten the same answer. It just would have been more work. Remember, we have a, a constant here. 
So part of those product rules would have canceled out and you would have been left with these two um, terms. So just be careful, you don't always need the product and quotient rule. I just rewrote that using one of the first few definitions we learned on differentiation. All right, so here's a, a, good, a good example where we, we're definitely going to need the, the, the uh, quotient rule and the, the chain rule here. So we're going to differentiate sine of 2x over x plus 1. So we're going to let u equal 2x over x plus 1. And when we differentiate that, we get f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. So we apply the product or quotient rule, and we get the following. So we have 2 times the quantity x plus 1 minus 2x times 1 over x plus 1 squared. Simplifying the quotient rule, we get this example here, or this, two, this expression, 2 over x plus 1 squared. So I picked u, I get du dx. So I rewrite my original function, f of x times sine of u. And we know that... Um, the derivative of our function now is going to be equal to f prime times du dx, right? So we're going to have cosine of u times du dx, which was right here. So there's our substitution. Derivative of f times du dx, okay? And so that's cosine of u. u, what remember, was 2x over x plus 1 times uh, 2 over the quantity x plus 1 squared. Carefully, you can't multiply these together because 2x over x plus 1 is in that cosine function, so we just leave our answer as this. Last example is a really tough example, uh, really because we want to find the tangent line. Um, so we're going to need to find the slope, which means we have to find the derivative. Uh, and the y-coordinate can be really tough to find here. Okay, so we're going to find the equation of this tangent line to y equals 3 tangent of x minus 2 cosecant of x, where x equals pi over 3. Now, we take the derivative, which is y prime, so we're going to do 3 times d dx of tangent of x minus 2 times d over dx of cosecant, just like we did in the last example. So here's our derivative. We found the derivative. So in order to get the tangent line, we need the derivative because we've got to be able to find the slope at a particular point. In this case, our point is uh, pi over 3. So the slope at pi over 3 is a matter of substitution. So we're, instead of writing x is here, we're going to write pi over 3. Okay? And here's the substitution when we get secant of squared of pi over 3. We get uh, 3 times 2 plus 2 times 2 over root 3 times 1 over uh, root 3, which equals 12 plus 4 thirds. So our slope is 40 thirds. Okay? The only other problem is we need our y-coordinate. And our y-coordinate has got to be found when uh, x equals pi over 3. So to find the y-coordinate, you actually have to plug pi over 3 back into the original function, which doesn't give us a, a nice uh, real number, gives us an irrational number. So I actually give that to you here at the top. So there's our x, and when we find, when we plug pi over 3 into our original function, we get root th 3 times root 3 minus 4 over root 3. Now, if you had a decimal, or decimal response to that, okay, that would be okay as well. You don't have to simplify it in this terms. If you plug in pi over 3, um, you can use a decimal here. Um, I get this y value by plugging in pi over 3 in for x. So that's where this guy comes from. And we'll talk about this a little more in class. So now we have our slope and we have our point. So now we use point slope form. So we have y minus uh, y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. And so here's my y coordinate. There's my x coordinate. There's my slope. Um, and we're not going to distribute the 4 over thirds. So we're not going to do any of that. We're just actually going to bring over this coordinate, uh, this value here, over to here. And we just leave it simplified. Or just like this. So that would be the tangent line at pi over 3 of our function here. All right, so if you guys have any questions or comments on taking uh, derivatives of trig functions, you can email me below, uh, or, you can, or you can put it in a comment box, or you can email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov. So I hope this helps, and we'll see you next time.